um, uh, that we basically, if you are looking at industrial revolution 4.0, uh, we need to um, understand uh, what is this, what is this all about, right? And uh, there are technologies, especially the AI, uh, which is a GPT, it's a general purpose technology. It is similar to uh, what electricity was, okay? And um, uh, from electrification, what we have done across the globe, I mean, everything we have got, which we operate upon, be it our AC, fridge, mobile devices, laptop, everything is electrified, right? Uh, it consumes electricity. Similarly, uh, now the world is moving to a new era uh, where we are cognifying things. Uh, so there is a cognification which is happening. Everything which we have been using till date is now being becoming smart. Okay, they, they are becoming intelligent. So your fridge is becoming intelligent, your AC is becoming intelligent, your car is becoming intelligent. And this is due to a technology, uh, obviously it is inspired by the human brain. It's a, a top-down approach. Uh, we are looking at a human brain and modeling it uh, into the silicon world. And uh, this is, this we are calling it, you, know, you may call it a machine learning because the age which we are living is a machine learning age. But in a general term, we call it AI, right? Uh, so we need to understand what is all this about. And uh, then probably we can move ahead and start looking much more, start delving much more deeper into this technology. So I, I let me introduce myself. I'm an IT guy. Um, I have been part of IT industry across my career. I did my MTech uh, in AI or machine learning, whatever you want to call that. Uh, 27 years back uh, from an institution known as BID Mesra Rachi. And um, uh, we, I leveraged the algorithm uh, to develop a software which actually uh, recognized uh, the handwritten digit recognition. I uh, used a um, few algorithms like MLP and Conan Network that time. Uh, so, but I have been always associated and I was looking at um, and, and tracking this technology as it was maturing. Now, three things which have enabled this technology to walk in. Uh, we need to understand that uh, it is very, very fundamental. Uh, one is uh, that uh, there is a humongous computational capability now available on cloud. That is one aspect. The second is, um, and, and this is this is not no more CapEx. So the world has moved from CapEx. So you want to deploy an application, you don't need to buy servers. You don't need to establish a data center to deploy an application. Okay, you need, just need to go and create an account on cloud, uh, be it IBM uh, Bluemix Cloud or be it Microsoft Azure or um, uh, be it um, uh, Google Cloud or AWS or Amazon. Whatever cloud you want to access, you have to just go create an account and deploy your application and it scales up. Okay, so there is one, pe one guy coming to your account or 10,000 people or 10 lakh people coming to your application the application is scales up. And that's the benefit of cloud. But the fundamental shift which has happened is it has moved from CapEx, a capital expenditure, to an operational expenditure. As more and more people come to your uh, application, you pay more to the cloud providers. Okay, so that, that is an operational expenditure, we call that. So that's the fundamental shift. Anybody can deploy in any application on, on top of a cloud. Okay, so that's quite liberating. And the second aspect uh, which, is, uh, which has happened is, that uh, uh, we call it ubiquitous network okay so your mobile devices currently use 4g right and that means that you are actually interacting uh, with the world or the internet from 7 to 7 mbps to 31 mbps speed that's quite a high speed and with the rollout of 5g this will jump up by 470 percent more okay so that means uh, to 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 understand it that a movie which you download on your mobile device over the air, I mean on the 4G network, if it takes 10 minutes to download today, okay, tomorrow uh, when 5G rock will be rolled out, and it is being rolled out, uh, by the way. So when it is there available to your uh, devices, that network, it will get downloaded within a second. So you will just ask a movie, a movie which takes 10 minutes today will get downloaded within a second on your mobile device. So that's a humongous capability it is bringing on the table, uh, specifically on the ubiquitous. Then the second capability with this ubiquitous network of 5G rollout will bring on is that every device will be talking. Already your mobile devices, laptops and all are talking. Your fridge is talking. Your AC is talking if it is Wi-Fi enabled. But with 5G rollout, 
every device, your sensors, your temperature sensors, your pressure sensors, your go on naming, your vibration sensors, every one of these devices will be talked. There are billions of sensors across uh, the globe, and all these will be connected over this network. So this network brings a humongous capability in terms of connectivity and in terms of speed and response, right? So that is the ubiquitous network. And the third most important aspect is that we have become data oriented. There is a digital transformation which has gone across. Today, uh, if you look at everything we do, <coughs> we do over the um, uh, the digital network, right? So you apply for a Dhar card or you apply for your licenses, you do your banking transactions, you file for an insurance, whatever you are doing today, you are generating humongous amount of data. You even go and post on Facebook and all you are generating humongous amount of data daily on a daily basis. Okay. So these three things have enabled AI to come in because AI consumes data. Data is the new oil now. Okay. So this is this is a very fundamental shift we need to understand. So we have been we have been watching the advent of AI, or we we can say that the AI awakening as it was coming in, and the narrative which we carry from Viti Foundation. It's a it's a nonprofit organization which I head, and um, uh, and we focus on AI technologies basically, specifically uh, which has got societal impact and public benefit. So everyone thinks about themselves, industry is implementing AI for their own benefit, be it top line or bottom line impact, but they are looking at their own benefit. But nobody is talking about humanity as a whole. So in Viti Foundation, uh, we, we focus on uh, the human aspect of it, uh, specifically if it has impact on environment, it has got an impact on education, on renewable energy, agriculture, uh, healthcare. These are the societal impact and public benefit applications, products, uh, platforms which we are developing here uh, in under Bithi Foundation and taking it to the public. So that's our focus. The narrative which we carry today is that as this technology matures, there is an existential risk for India. Okay, not only to us, there is an existential risk to India in terms that India as a nation may not exist if the, when this technology matures and we are not participating in this technology advent. So this is very, very critical. We need to understand and that is our focus to see that uh, when this technology matures up, uh, it makes a soft landing. I mean, we are party to it. And, and we will. I will explain that to you guys as I progress. So if you look down on my screen, you'll find that this is us, the homo sapiens, right? The humans. And uh, we have taken over this world virtually, the most intelligent, most dominant species. Um, we are not only taken over the world, we are actually destroying it at this point of time, right? So, but there is a guy coming up very fast in the background. And this guy, we call it artificial super intelligence. So we will understand what this connotation is. But ASI is something every corporate sector, every country who is investing in AI today is trying to achieve, the artificial super intelligence. So let's try to understand. Let's go ahead and uh, <coughs> and, and but before we uh, try to uh, go a little deeper there, let's look at when we talk about artificial intelligence or maturity of artificial intelligence. Uh, let us say artificial super intelligence. When we achieve, what will happen? Look at some of the very same people, scientists, uh, and all what they are talking about AI. Okay, uh, Stephen Hawking, you know this gentleman, right? He's no more. And he came out and said, the development of full artificial intelligence could spell the end of human race, right? He's an astrophysicist, very well respected. He's no more. And you know this guy, Elon Musk, right? The, the owner of Tesla and SpaceX. He said, we are summoning the demon. Or the Rakshas Atta to Kakata, Hame Kajata. This is what he meant when he said we are summoning the demon. Nick Bostrom, and I will suggest that you need to go uh, buy this book, so, um, The Super Intelligence, and read this book. This is an amazing book. You need to read it. Okay, he said a Disneyland without children. So, what will happen? There will be a lot of collaterals, a lot of technology, wonderful world, everything will be three dimensional, but then we will be not there. The children will be not there. James Barat. He went one step ahead and said, we have pulled the black ball out. It is our final invention. Whatever we wanted to do on this earth, we have done it. Okay. Our final invention, artificial intelligence, the end of human era. Okay. Yeah,
Yeah. Can you go, guys? Can go on mute. That will be wonderful. Okay. But I, what I believe is more on the last line, which is from Werner Winge. The physical extinction of human race is one possibility. And I completely believe on the human resilience. And I believe that if we work right, uh, we focus right, we develop this technology rightfully, uh, it can be an immense benefit to the humanity. This is something which we need to understand. So this is what uh, the artificial intelligence could, uh, could bring the apocalypse. This is what they're all talking about. So when the AI will be matured, we will be on the left-hand side of the screen, right? We'll go extreme. Now, if you believe that AI is not there currently, let me tell you guys, AI is all around us already. Okay, the way we travel, the way we socialize, the way we do business, the way we do politics, the way we shop, AI is all around us. Okay, let me give you an example. The way we do politics. You know, uh, they, they say uh, the Trump became the president of America and it became due to Facebook AI. Okay, so if you, if you, if you track that when he became the president, he actually became the president with only 1 lakh 10,000 votes. Okay. And specifically in three counties, that is Pennsylvania, Michigan, and Wisconsin. Okay, that is where he took the lead. And he defeated Hillary with 1,10,000 votes. It is very, very small margin. Okay. And it is attributed to Facebook AI. What they say is the day before election, a message sent out by Facebook AI, and the message was very simple. It said that your friends are going to vote. Are you? And then it pulled 12 of your friends' thumbnails, photographs down below. Now, AI, Facebook, AI actually tracks you. So if you go on Facebook and upload any photo and try to tag, he knows who you are, right, on the photo. He knows about you, your wife, your kids, your parents, everyone he knows, your friends, and he will go on pointing out what the name is. The name will pop it out, right? So AI is actually looking at your photo and identifying who you are, who your friends are, and it is keeping a track what kind of post you like, what your leaning is, are you a right winger or a left winger? Okay, and in our terms, are you a Bhakt or you are a Congressia or you are a, a Samajwadi supporter? Whatever you are, right? Your, whatever your political leanings, Facebook knows about it. So they send the message out to all those people who were Trump supporters or right wingers in, in, in American parallels, right? So it went out to this and it says that additional 3,75,000 people came out and voted for Trump. And that's the reason he became the president of America. So it is such a powerful technology. It is taking our political dispensation to a next level, right? It is convincing us to make somebody a president of one of the most powerful countries in the, of the world. So <coughs> we need to wake up to this fact. The way we shop, right? Let me give you another example. You know, you go on um, Amazon. Every one of you must have gone and bought uh, things from Amazon. Now, what you do? You go, you buy things, you like things, you buy it, you pay for it. And next day, a delivery guy will come and deliver it to you, right? Now, if you look at that uh, particular thing, if you order five things, five different guys come and uh, deliver things to you. So that adds to the logistics burden of Amazon. And it is humongous. Being an $114 billion firm odd, Around $57 billion they spend on logistics and, and, and shipping things or fulfillment uh, to your home, right? So and Amazon is also one of the biggest users of AI, or we say uh, the cognitive services. We call them cognitive services on AWS Cloud. So they are experimenting with AI. To, um, and so this model, when you buy and it comes to you, is known as shop and ship, right? Now they are looking that can we reverse it, can we make it ship and shop. So what will happen? One fine day you will wake up and you will find in the uh, in your, on your doorstep, you'll open the door and then you'll find an Amazon box. You'll open it up and you will be amazed that you have got all those things you required that day, be it a milk or some sabji or vegetables or um, a, your mobile device or a laptop, whatever you wanted to buy, it will be in that room and that box particularly, okay? It is being predicted by AI that what is that you are going to buy? What kind of quality of product, what price range, how much you can pay, all that AI is going to predict and thing will be there at your doorstep. You will take it out and, and the, uh, the guy will come back and he'll collect all the boxes and go away and you will get charged what you have taken it out, okay? So this model from shop and ship, they plan to change it to ship and shop and they are already experimenting. 
So we need to be aware of it from shop and ship to ship and shop. And this is AI based model. The way we do business, okay. Uh, look at the last time the AI was leveraged to predict out of 114 startups, which one of startups will become a unicorn. When I say unicorn, that means a billion dollar firm. Okay, out of 114, um, the startups which was given to AI to predict, predicted AI predicted 14 of them, and seven of them actually became a unicorn. Okay, that's a huge margin which AI brings on the table, huge benefit. So this is a predictive analytics which it can bring. It's a humongous capability it is bringing on our table. We need to understand that too. So the way we travel, the way we socialize, I talked about the Facebook thing. Everywhere AI is there. Okay, Google is using it. They are actually tracking you. Even if you type half of a search, yeah, Google takes it back and understand what you intended to type there. Okay, what is the intention of yours to search? So they know about you. Amazon knows about you. But Google knows about you. Okay, you're, um, you go on Instagram. Everyone is leveraging AI to understand and predict how you are going to behave, what you want, what your leanings are, what your thought process is, everything. This is being predicted. AI is knowing about and learning about you. The Siri, you are using Apple devices, you are talking to AI on Siri. You are using Google, you are talking to Google Assistant. You are using Microsoft Windows, you are talking to Cortana, and they are becoming better day by day. Okay, they understand you, they know what you're going to ask, and they can respond to you much more better. Now, to understand much more better on from the AI perspective, we also need to understand that what will be the impact of AI. Okay, one impact is specifically when I use a word like existential risk to India is the great decoupling. Now, what is the great decoupling? By 2000, the human productivity actually started going down. Okay, so we had done everything, Six Sigma, ISO 27, 27,001, CM level five, whatever, all these processes and all we implemented. Uh, I come from IT background, so obviously I'll take more on Six Sigma and CM level five and all. But these all processes were the standard operating procedures. We increased the human productivity to a level, okay? The labor, the services, the knowledge workers. And then by 2000, we found it is actually declining. It is not going up anymore. But then platform-based or data-based or software-based, specifically like robotic process automation or DevOps, which is AI-based today, uh, these kind of uh, tool-based productivity or platform-based productivity, it is started going at, it has been going up continuously. So what happens, like if you go to a Volkswagen factory in Munich, you will find uh, yeah, uh, probably a few years back, there are 50,000 workers in work, uh, working into that factory. Today, there are only 5,000 workers. All has been replaced by the robotic robots. So now you will find our conveyor belt, the car is moving, and multiple robots are working on top of it. Somebody, someone, some have some robotic arm is putting up the wheels, and some of it putting the dashboard, one is fixing the window, okay, and the car is going ahead. And these all are working very smartly on top of it. And finally, it is painted and the car is ready. The productivity from 36 days, probably one car to be produced in 36 days by humans earlier, is now dropped down to 3.6 days, okay? So if they are producing a car in 3.6 days, then it is the whole process is automated, automated now, right? Humans are now no more there. So this is a machine-based or software-based uh, productivity, and AI is going to enhance that journey much more, okay? And when it enhances that uh, journey, there will be two impact, and we need to understand that. Today, if you look at on the, uh, the, on the global uh, perspective, 10% of people, people like Burkos, or people like uh, you go on naming uh, Bill Gates and all, these people have got 90% of money, Adani and Ambani, they have got 90% of the money in their hand of the globe. And we people, we have got only 10% of the money in our hand, okay, the global money I'm talking about. But with advent of AI, okay, this will this in income income inequality will increase. It will become acute. One percent of people tomorrow will have ninety nine percent of the money, and ninety nine percent people will have one percent of the money left out in their hand. Okay, so this is this will be a great income inequality AI will create. Okay, and the, the reasoning, if you look at, there will be three reasoning are there. Share in production, so as more robots are implemented, more machines and software and platforms are implemented, okay, more and more people will be asking to automate it, okay. 
so um, the high skill people will get replaced right because robots people work for eight hours right we work for eight hours but these robotic implementations work 24 into 7 right they don't sleep they go on producing more and more so their sale in production will be higher okay and it will go on becoming more and more acute as more money will get invested into it the second the investment flows so tomorrow when you will be establishing a factory they will say hey how much automation do you have with you you say hey i've got only 30 percent automation they say no will not say will not fund you if you have got 80 percent of automation we'll fund you okay so if you implement more robotic you bring in more automation you will get funded you will get money so the income flow or the funding flow will will be less and less coming to you if you are not automating right so that means more machine coming into the factories and the production environment and third what will happen is the terms of trade will change see if you remember amazon, the companies like amazon google they don't buy or any other company they don't buy from uh, come or, or even walmart they don't buy from companies which uh, employs child labor right now what will happen tomorrow that if you employ a human they will not buy from you. so the terms of trade will change they will say how much robotic implementation and automation you have if you have got this automation you if you employ you humans no we will not buy from you so the terms of trade will change now this will actually increase the income inequality that is something we need to understand so if you look at from the productivity human productivity terms our per capita income has gone down the employment is going down uh, the family income is going down the but the income due to automation is going up okay so what will happen is that what we believe is our forte today we have got 42.5 percent people young people like you but tomorrow there will be no jobs right you will be not required we humans will be not required as this technology matures so the jobs will be not there but then let me tell you that obviously the things will be there the ai will be assisting us uh, from precision agriculture to all the other aspects of it okay so we will have food on the table we'll have it will be served to us We'll have a freedom with autonomous car to travel to any place we want. But then what we will not having is soil, the freedom to make a decision, right? And then comes the sustainability factor, okay? So this, this as the substitutivity increase, they will be doing all the production. It will be not coming to us. So make in India will become a dream, okay? It will not come to us. Developed nations who have got done more automation, they will be doing their own production as well right because they can they don't depend upon the human labor anymore so they'll be doing more more and more substitutely will happen there as well uv humans will be not required and as this high substitutely in advanced nations will happen the sustainability of nations like us will go down we may not be able to sustain ourselves that is very critical for us to understand i hope you guys are there are you able to hear me Anybody? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. But I think slides are not changing. Does anyone have the same problem? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It is not changing. Yes, sir. Slides are not changing. The first slide is coming. You please represent again. Then I think the problem will be sorted out. Yes. Now it is changing, sir. Now it is changing. Let me yes. Try it. Okay. Okay. Are you able to see the slide now? Yes, sir. They are visible. Okay. So these these slides you were not able to see this one. Gaurav, the is the slide sir, changing? Now it is visible, sir. So now it is okay. visible. But I think uh, when you when you start with full mode now, so I think then it, that time it is not uh, changing. Right. But now it is uh, now it is changing. Right. Has it changed no, AI progress? Yes, yes, sir. Now changing. Okay, wonderful. Okay, thank you. So, uh, so if you look from the Gartner, this is known as Gartner hype cycles. If you look from this hype cycle perspective, you will see all those technologies which are associated to AI. Okay, machine learning, natural language processing, all these technologies are virtual. They are all into the trough of disillusionment. I mean, when we say on Gartner High Cycle, a trough of disillusionment, I mean, it is not mapping to the expectation. There is a humongous expectation from this technology, but industry is adopting. 
and technologies like the speech recognition and GPU accelerators are already up. It has been, it is on the slope of enlight, um, enlightenment or on the plateau of productivity. It is already adopted by um, industries across the globe. And there are other AI technologies which are on the innovation trigger. And these triggers will generate the next generation of AI, which we call it artificial general intelligence. So the age we are living in today is the, this age is known as artificial narrow intelligence, the age of artificial narrow intelligence. And very soon these technologies, these innovation triggers, which is there, it will take us to the next level. And that will be artificial general intelligence. So we'll talk about it. Okay, but one thing we, we need to understand is by 2025, the money or the revenue which AI will generate will be around 32 to 35 trillion dollars. It is humongous. It will create new jobs from AI analysts, AI engineers, data analysts, data scientists. You go on naming. It is already doing it, gentlemen. So um, um, our focus should be on AI very, very acute. In developed nations, humongous amount of money is being invested into AI. US is more, uh, investing more than three trillion dollars into AI. China is putting in 147 billion dollars into AI. Okay, and they have got institutions. China has got 152 institutions currently working on AI technology. We don't have a single university focused on AI today. Okay, we have we are adopting, but we don't have dedicated. They have got they have got more than 200 programs into these universities and institutions. We don't have. Okay, we are we still tinkering with that data set. So from the government to academia to industry, we are quite back. We are actually left out by two decades in AI technology. And this is something we need to focus and move very, very acutely. Otherwise, we'll be left behind. And this time, we'll be left behind, will be probably permanent in nature, or I call it a perpetual subservitude. Let's try to understand that. But before I go there, let me try to explain AI a little. Okay, uh, give me a second, gentlemen. Uh, just give me a second. Sorry. So let me try to define AI a little much more better for you. So when you Google word like AI, you'll find a lot of words coming in like neural networks, planning, robotics, machine learning, natural language processing, cognitive systems, knowledge, or ontology, or perception. These are all the words which actually define AI. So AI is a very, very generic, a larger word. But we, if you want to understand AI, there are two kinds of AI available today. One is where we humans are, are in the loop. It is augmenting us. It is helping us in making decisions, but we are taking the final decision. And another area is where we humans are not in loop. And that is the area where we are afraid of AI, more of it. But let us look at human is still in the loop, where we are still making decisions, right? There are two kinds of AI there. One is known as hardwired or specific systems, and another one is adoptive systems. Now, hardwired systems are those kind of algorithms which we have trained and deployed, but it is not learning anymore. Okay, they are hardwired. And but the other kind of system, which is adoptive systems, they we call it augmented intelligence as well. They have been trained and deployed, but it is learning from the environment continuously. It is evolving in nature. It is becoming better day by day. So those are adoptive systems. We call them augmented intelligence. So there are two kinds of AI. One is assisted intelligence. And another is augmented intelligence, and they are assisting us or augmenting us. On the second side, if you look at uh, where we humans are not in the loop, there is an automation, which is an industrial automation, as we understand. I talk about uh, the, uh, the Volkswagen factory in Munich. So it is an industrial automation. The code has been written by us. They are linear in nature. Okay, We have written the code. They are idiot boxes, basically. It knows one, only one thing to do. They are not intelligent. It is not evolving. It is not an AI. Okay, that is an industrial automation. But then, if you come down on adoptive systems, they are hardwired. If you come down on adoptive systems where humans are not in loop, they are autonomous intelligence. Now, this is the fear factor because they are making decisions, and there can be decisions which can be detrimental to human beings too. 
So let me give you an example. You must have heard about autonomous uh, vehicles, right? They have been licensed on uh, U.S. streets and, and developed nations. They are delivering pizza. Um, it is delivering uh, uh, people from one place to another. It has already reached level three, right? And it is moving up. It is uh, going to level four very soon. And level five, which will be as good as a human driver, it will be driving on our streets. Um, and, and it learns from the environment. Um, some of these cars which have been running on these vehicles, like from Uber and all, um, these autonomous vehicles, they have gained more than 50,000 hours of human driving or driving on the streets, right? Though it is generating some concerns today, but it is learning fast. It's becoming better day by day. And, and this, this journey of AI is not only software orientation journey, it's a hardware oriented journey too. So from a software simulation or the algorithms which are currently being simulated, it is also moving on hardware chips like neuromorphic computing or neuromorphic chips, which is which actually maps to the human brain, our neurons and synapses as it is, it maps to it. So it is moving into that direction. So this is the very basic fundamentals which we talk about the AI perspective. Let me... <clears throat> I hope you are able to see my screen. My screen has changed, gentlemen. Gaurav? Yes, sir. OK, wonderful. So I was talking about a few things from the AI perspective, the narrow intelligence. So we are living in a world, artificial narrow intelligence. So what is the, what, and, and then very soon, as, uh, as more investment is happening, like Microsoft has given a billion dollar, OK? A billion dollar is around 8,000 crores. It has given to a company known as OpenAI, a foundation like us. It has funded it to develop artificial general intelligence technologies. So let's try to understand what ANI is and what AGI is. And very soon from AGI, it will go up to our ASI, which I talked about earlier, the artificial super intelligence. So let's try to understand what ANI is and what general intelligence is. The narrow intelligence is something where these algorithms can be taught one thing. So if you uh, teach him driving a car, but tomorrow if you start, is to, you teach him to fly a plane, it will forget about driving a car. It don't remember things. But th there are algorithms now being developed, which actually can retain some of these uh, knowledge, which it has learned into the last uh, iterations, right? So that is one aspect of it. Uh, or we call it that uh, the, 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 the catastrophic uh, uh, forgetfulness, right? It forgets things. So this is a catastrophic forgetfulness, which currently the narrow intelligence faces. The second aspect of it is, uh, from the task perspective, it operates upon a structured data set. So if you are from, you guys coming from computer science background, you know what is structured data is. The data which we store on relational database system, they are structured data, right? In our tables, on our database. So current AI actually operates upon this structured data set. But as it moves on general intelligence, two things will happen. Right? One is, like if you know, we humans, we don't forget. So if you have learned cycling or swimming early childhood, and but somebody after 20 years, 30 years, throws you in the water, you'll be able to still swim. Somebody gives you a bicycle, you'll be still able to drive that bicycle. So we remember things. We don't forget it. Once we have learned, we retain it. So that is the, that is the capability of general intelligence. Second, we operate upon unstructured data, the tacitum, okay? The olfactory organ, sumne ki sakti, hearing capability, our vision and taste bud. This is the five sensory organs which we do have, humans have, and we operate, we create our reality with that. AI will do the same. It will create on all its structured data. On these five senses, it will create a reality and operate upon. So AGI will do. Will have two things like us. One is it remember tasks, right? It will not forget it. It will not have the catastrophic forgetfulness. And second, it will <clears throat> operate upon unstructured data just like us, just like humans, and create its own reality. And then from there, from AGI, it will move to the next level, that is super intelligence. Super intelligence and AGI, the difference is AGI will be like us, it will be a sentient being like us, but then an ASI will be equal to all the human knowledge which we have today. If you put all the human brains together and put into one brain, that is what ASI is. It's a single term. It's a super intelligence which we are talking about and being it is being developed today, right? It, it is we we operate between 90 to 140 IQ level. This will operate upon 12,500 IQ level. A humongous jump into our understanding and the way we operate and think, right? 
So that is the fear factor. This kind of technology, this kind of intelligence is a fear. AGI and ASI is the fear factor. So where we are today? So to understand much more better, <coughs> AI is already catching up, catching up with us. A human intelligence is defined by multiple intelligence which we have. We have got a spatial intelligence. We know how to navigate from one place to. We are a naturalist. We have got musical. Some of you can sing very better. Some of uh, us are bathroom singers. Uh, the mathematical capability. Some of you have got very good mathematical capability. Some struggle in mathematics, right? Existential, interpersonal, body kinesthetics, linguistics, interpersonal. Sir, uh, kind of intelligence. Sir, sir, sorry to disturb again. I think uh, in my uh, presentation, this slide is not moving. Yes, we uh, are not able to view the slides again. Sir, sir, I think the issue is you. You are not. Uh, uh, uh like uh, presenting the whole screen you are only presenting the yeah now it is moving now but is as moving. you do full as you do full screen now so it will be like um, uh, it will be uh, shift shifting to other screen so that's why i think uh, it's not it's not uh, moving further Please. okay not an issue i'll keep it like this are you able to see my screen yes sir okay yes. So if it is visible, it is legible, then I'll keep it like this. I'll not go on to the full screen mode. Okay. Thank you. Thanks, Varun. So, so we have we humans have got multiple types of intelligence, and now AI is taking over one by one. You use Google Maps now, right? That is a special intelligence which we have. And Google Maps has gone ahead than us. It is not only helping us to drive from one location to another location, it is helping crores of people across the globe, billions of people across the globe, it is helping them, right? It knows exactly, it learns from your driving skill sets. It knows about the traffic patterns. It knows where the blockages are. It is helping us. So AI is already taking over. Google Maps is driven by AI. It is learning algorithms, right? So it is already going ahead than us on a spatial calculators. We have, it has been old, old days thing, right? We have been using in our engineering. It was quite ahead than us, right? So those mathematical capability computer systems are quite ahead than us, much more better than us. Okay, but all other type of intelligence it is going to take over very soon. They say like uh, GPT three currently, which has been developed by OpenAI, it is, has been trained on one hundred and forty seven billion parameters. They say if you give a word to GPT three, it can write the entire book. It, it has it has come to that level of intelligence. It can write the entire book. Right? Tomorrow, if you will type a word. The whole sentence, the whole paragraph will be written by AI for you. It knows exactly what you are trying to write. Okay, and it will write it for you. So those capabilities are walking in. So if you look at from the perspective down below on the Gartner High Cycle, applied AI is already there. The narrow intelligence is already there. It is being in leverage by in multiple senses. But AGI is coming in. Artificial general intelligence, it has the technology innovation or the trigger is already there. And these technologies are coming in. And let me delve a little deeper there. So AI is all around us, gentlemen. It is already playing role of personal assistant, driver, writer, stockbroker, soldier, machine operator, chef. If you go to some of the restaurants, now in India also it has come in. One startup I know of, they have come in, they have developed an AI-based uh, robotic system which actually cook food for you, right? You can tell your recipe, it will cook the food and bring it on your table. So these are the it is AI is playing the role of a chef. It is learning there too, right? So on AI is all around us. It is doing all this kind of a job. Let's go to when I say the AGI innovation trigger. But before I go there, uh, let me I'll also bring in one aspect of it. And that aspect is, right, augmenting humans, right? So the technology, the current AI, we call that an intuitive AI. It is walking into the cycle which we have been better. Okay, as this technology matures, it is augmenting us in innovation cycle. Okay, so this was one project, a dream catcher, where what they did, they fitted a vehicle, a car uh, with probably uh, around 400 sensors, and they collected around 4 billion parameters of data set as this car was being driven. And they gave that data to AI. And they also gave AI all the design parameters for a car. The cars have been designed across the globe by different companies. That data was also given to it. And then it was asked to design a car, a chassis, a new chassis. 
and it, it fabricated a chassis on the right hand side. This Dreamcatcher project, this if you look at this particular chassis which AI designed it, it is much more safer. It looks like a bird bird's um, uh, bones actually. But we know there is a fundamental difference into this, what AI has generated and designed these chases. In our car chases, we have got holes where we pass on the wires through it, right? Your headlamp is connected to your controls inside the car. But when AI designed it, it actually created a nerve cells inside the chassis itself, where you can run these wires. Okay, so it took care of that. There is a fundamental shift into this whole design if you look at it. Okay, but this was the chassis the design. Now, this was leveraged by, and this has generated a new science, a new area of engineering, uh, the, com the computational engineering, right? Which actually takes all these data sets and design new things, right? Be it a car or be it a rocket or be it whatever you want it designed for. You can do that leveraging this computational engineering using leveraging AI, okay? So this is a new science area which is coming in very fast. And uh, what they did was they took up this dream catcher project and they developed and designed a car which is known as Dinga 21C hypercar. Okay, it is it is being designed and assembled in LA. Now there is a fundamental shift. This has been designed by AI, but it is also being manufactured by AI. They call it augmented unit. So robotic arms are there. They are these are all 3D printable components. They are assembled. They are printed by AI and they are assembled together into a car. You know the production cycle has increased how much? A car which has been being produced by a conveyor belt system or automated factory in 3.6 days is now being produced in 3.6 hours. So you can well imagine the kind of implementation or augmentation of productivity increase it is bringing in. But the most fearful factor is AI in innovation cycle. It has already walked into innovation cycle, which, uh, which was the forte of us human beings. We, we, we were innovating things. Now AI is going to innovate things and there will be no catching up judgment. Okay, because this will create a, a runaway innovation. We humans can work on five technologies or 10 technologies like 3D, big data, internet of things, cognitive system, but AI based innovation cycle or AI can work at a simultaneously on hundreds of technologies, be it transport 2.0, circular economy, money 2.0, sharing economy, connected healthcare, artificial super, they can work on multiple set of technologies. They can generate their own AI. If you read news, you know that AI, Google AI is generating a new AI, which is fundamentally better than what we humans have been designing, these algorithms, right? And training it. So they can generate, they can, and this will create a runaway economy and it will have a transformational impact. So all these AI technologies are having a transformational impact now. It is going and changing the world very, very fast. And this will create a runaway innovation with the world transformation uh, will be very, very acute and very, very quick and very, very accelerated. This is something we need to understand. So the world we, we are looking at and you guys will be looking at in coming decade will be a tremendously different world. We need to brace up for the impact of AI now. Another aspect which I always pointed out into the runaway innovation and innovation cycle. If we are not party to it, what will happen? Let me take a minute to tell you about it. You know, uh, the Industrial Revolution 1.0 happened due to steam. It happened, it happened in Europe. We were not party to it. When I say we, Indians were not party to it. And they, they invented um, uh, railway engines, they invented steam safe, they invented machine guns, steam-based machine guns. And what was the result? In? We were slaves for 200 years. Hum gulam se 200 saal tak, right? So that was 1.0, which happened. Um, in Europe. The second revolution, industrial revolution 2.0, it happened due to electricity. It created the great divide, the underdeveloped countries and developed nations, the people, the countries which consumed more electricity, they were known as developed nations because they were manufacturing, they had factories, right? They were consuming, they had better lifestyle. We are still a developing nation. We are not a developed nation, gentlemen. We are still a developing nation. So that great divide is still persists, right? Industrial Revolution 3.0 happened due to computing. That is where we caught up. Today we are producing 287 billion dollar of IT exports, right? We have got 3.5 million people working in IT industry. We service 55 percent of IT service needs from India. World woke up to the fact that Indians are also smart people. We were called smarty, and that's the slang in US. You go to America, they call Indian smarties. Okay, 
So that is a smart, and that is where we caught up with the world. They woke up to the fact that we can also. But you, let me tell you one thing, Industrial Revolution 4.0 is happening due to intelligence. The cognification is happening. If we are not party to this revolution, we are doomed. We are looking at a perpetual servitude. This time, ye jo gulami hogi, ye gulami hum nahi paenge. We will be probably happy living under this gulami. Okay? This is a perpetual servitude. We'll have everything on our table. We'll have food, we'll have travel, we'll have everything on our table. Uh, will be uh, something different altogether. Um, uh, so there is a, a power failure, gentlemen. Let me... Are you able to still hear me? Yes, sir. Okay, wonderful. Uh, no, no issues at all. Uh, so I had a power failure here, but um, uh, I'll continue. You are able to see my screen too, right? Yes, sir. Wonderful. So, uh, so we are talking about now a perpetual um, a failure which will happen here, right? And we will be probably looking at a perpetual servitude, gentlemen. So this is something very, very critical. Uh, let me share my screen again. Uh, just hold on. Give me a second. Till the power comes. Right. So we have been talking about this, the perpetual servitude, right? Now that is the industrial revolution 4.0, which is happening today. Now, uh, but in, uh, in, um, in, 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 in current future, what will happen? If you go down below, you will see the Gartner high cycle. There are multiple technologies, but one technology specifically, uh, which is very, very critical for us. And, and that is the technology, which we call it. Uh, there are multiple technologies, which is all AI based technologies. But one technology specifically, uh, so let me just share my screen again back. Uh, it has come. I hope it will not uh, uh, go out now. Right. So, Gaurav, are you able to hear me or let's uh, see the screen again? Yes, sir. yes, okay. sir. Okay, wonderful. So, but um, if you go down below on my Gartner high cycle, you will find out there are a lot of AI technologies which are actually changing. I talked about earlier, but one technology let's focus upon, and that's quantum computing. Okay, so if you go down below on the innovation figures, if you see there is a quantum computing, right? And and this is a fundamental shift which is going to happen, uh, gentlemen. And let me try to explain why. This will create a new generation of AI technologies, which is already happening, this new physics. We call that a quantum AI, right? Now, quantum computing is a fundamental shift. The current technology of computing which we use, it's all based on zero one. That's the bottom of approach. We took zero off and on, and we designed our VLSI chips. We have our computers and servers and mobile devices today, right? But with quantum computers, uh, this is not only zero one, but there is an entanglement. There is a probability bit also, a third bit also. So both can be zero, both can be one. And this kind of a computing, which is being, which is called, called as quantum computing, and I will request you, gentlemen, to go deeper into that. Okay, is much more powerful. It will bring more humongous calculate calculation capability on the table. Okay, and how it impacts us? So let's try to understand. Our brain, our cranial, our brain, it does around 26 quadrillion computations per second. Okay, that is what our brain does, but it does at 110 meters per second speed. 810 meter per second ki speed se hi karta hai. Now, if you look at one of the supercomputers like Hunan 1 in China, it does 32 quadrillion computations per second at the speed of light. So, you can always say that human brain can be modeled on a supercomputer, but I think the comparison ends here, gentlemen. Our for doing 26 quadrillion computations per second at the speed of 110 meter per second. Our brain requires only this cranial. Ye khopdi hi keval chahiye usko jagah. Okay, that is the space it requires. But Hunan one requires 72, 724 square meter space. 
in in parallels um, in bombay parallels specifically it is two bedroom apartment seven of two bedroom apartment hazar hazar square feet ke saath apartment chahiye use apne aap ko rakhne ke liye right so what we do under this cranial is 26 quadrillion computations per second for doing 32 quadrillion computations per second it needs seven two bedroom apartments okay so that's the stage second we consume only 20 watts gentlemen and uh, uh, hunan one consumes around 24 megawatts okay it says it's a, it's the size of a small uh, building it requires uh, to do that kind of a thing i uh, sorry it went off again but i'll continue because you are able to hear me so so i was talking about that it is sharing it uh, uh, but quantum computers big brains a new paradigm so the human brain cannot be modeled on the current computational capability which we have right but then the uh, quantum especially walking in changes the whole paradigm okay recently you must have read about um, uh, the quantum computers specifically let me share it back again right are you are you able to see it or let me share my screen back uh right now i think i'm back again sorry for uh, the power outrage yes sir now it is visible okay wonderful so if you look at the quantum computers you must have read about that google achieved a quantum supremacy if you read no news or uh, ibm achieved a quantum supremacy they have developed around 72 qubits so in quantum uh, computing we call them qubits and actually you can go on microsoft cloud and ibm cloud and do these kind of calculations right you can deliver it qubit um, qubits actually and do that and i will suggest you gentlemen start learning about quantum computers start doing your programming in um, the qubit environment on the cloud and get an access to it and learn more about it right but they have developed 72 qubits let me tell you a quantum annular which is around 100 qubit uh, quantum computer uh, will be more powerful than any supercomputer on this earth 100 qubit quantum computer our, our, our analog quantum computer which will be around 500 qubit computer will be so powerful that today if you put all your computational capability the cloud the servers the laptops the mobile devices across the globe put them all together the kind of computational capability you will achieve on 500 qubit quantum computer will be more powerful and it is so powerful that a statement which was given a uh, to hunan one i was talking about that supercomputer so let me refer back to that again a uh, hunan one and the same statement which is given to hunan one can be given to a quantum computer hunan one will take 475 years to solve that right but then if you give we, it was given to a quantum annealer it solved it in within 7 seconds so it is such a powerful capability we are talking a 500 qubit will be the entire computational capability on this earth put together will be more powerful than that okay the 500 qubit quantum computer so when this moore's law will get disrupted with this new physics the the agi will be a distinct possibility the quantum ai is a distinct possibility the human brain will be modeled the artificial general intelligence will be modeled on computers because it will jump off the graph from the moore's law right and look at one aspect more more critical about this whole thing is um uh, a universal quantum computer which is and by the way the analog quantum computer is not very far away gentlemen it is only few years okay they are already developing it so one quantum computer will be more powerful than all the quantum uh, computational capability today which exist on this earth and they are reaching there so if you look from the from the uh, the startup perspective on quantum encryption on hardware software building quantum computers quantum ai optical quantum computers quantum cloud computing quantum circuits there is no indian company this is something worrying we are not working into that aspect we are not developing this technology so we are left out on two things on vlsi chips below 5 angstrom unit we don't have taiwan is having that technology but we don't have china is not having it and there is a war on that already right quantum technologies we are not there we are still babbling into that we have we are not there so we have to develop this technology see that we got uh, we have got a focus in moving into 
and now you understand why it is so critical. By 2045, they say it will surpass human brain and, and equal to all the collective uh, brain power on this earth, uh, the AI will cross that boundary. That will become super intelligence. Okay. And next down two years, 2023, it will become AGI. It may have become an AGI already. We don't, we are not aware of it. Okay. The only difference is the quantum computer currently operates below sub-zero environment. That is around an absolute zero environment because it needs superconductivity. Uh, it is not at room temperature today. But it is a humongous capability we should be aware of. So the world will move from where? From current symbolic world, the coding, which you are aware of it. So from symbolic world, it will move to statistical or AI paradigm, right? Uh, um, uh, the world where more and more algorithms will be, uh, uh, will be used. So we have written around all these CRM, supply chain management, intranet, internet, all these applications, CRPs, we have written around 8 billion lines of code. All these code will be changing to the AI algorithms now. Okay. So very soon we'll be in a world which is known as sub-symbolic and you will be not required to do coding. It will maintain its code again themselves. Okay. It will be these all codes. It will evolve. It will become better day by day. And we humans will be not required for coding, for testing, for delivery management. And that means 60, if you look at from NASCOM report in 2017, I was privy to that. Uh, McKinsey presented a report and said 65% of the IT jobs will be gone in coming decades. Okay, you know what it means? 3.5 million people are working in IT industry in India. 2 million people will be jobless in coming decades. You will be not required. Hiring has already become south. It has gone south. Okay. Uh, so less and less people are being hired. Engineers are being hired uh, into IT world now. Okay. More and more automation, RPA based or DevOps based automation is being brought in into delivering applications and managing it. So we are looking at a world. We are the technological singularity, gentlemen, is inevitable. Okay. They say by 2030, we'll not get drive, license to drive. Autonomous vehicles will be everywhere. By 2040, you go to a mall, you'll be talking uh, to a salesman who will be a robo. He will be helping you and assisting you in buying things and making decisions around it. By 2040, or uh, AI will be writing the best books, the, it will be painting it, you will be creating the music which will be here. It will become AR Rahman, right? It will be writing the best books you will read. AI will be doing that. And by 2050, you will not be able to differentiate you are talking to a human being, a humanoid, or a human being. So you are talking to AI, okay, or a human being, you will not be able to differentiate. If you, if you, uh, you can go and hit Sophia on YouTube, right? You'll be able to interact with Sophia. You will be able to see that Sophia. It has been given a citizenship by Saudi Arabia, if you're aware of it, right? So it is the Hansen Robotics. What they have done, they have added an LP to the facial recognition, facial expressions, actually. So Sophia can smile. She can make sarcastic face. She can make a sad face. She can crack joke and laugh about it. It is like us. It's a, it is called as a humanoid, right? So it is becoming so good now. We need to become aware of that. So what is the human parity? Where it is AI today? On resonant vision test, on object recognition, it is all. it was already by 2016, 96% closer to us. Okay? That's a deep, a deep learning technology. On the speech recognition, the human parity was 5.1%. Actually, it has become better than, better than us by 2017 in speech recognition. We humans make 5.5% error rate. AI was making only 5.1% by 2017. So you can well imagine the kind of an accuracy level it is. It has been achieved. It has achieved. On machine reading comprehension, on a squared reading comprehension test, that is the Stanford uh, testing, uh, it, it has reached 88.493% 88, 88 by 2018. On machine translation, human parity, uh, by 2018, it was 69.9%. That is empty research system. Okay, these are all testing methodologies where we test it out that how good AI is performing. So you and we are and gentlemen now in 2021. I'm giving you data which was few years back. So you can well imagine some of these areas it has already caught up with us. That is where it has already reached us. Okay. So if you look from the uh, come, uh, today's paradigm on machine learning, okay, uh, there are multiple uh, ways and means uh, the machine learning algorithms are being taught today. Uh, unsupervised learning, supervised learning reinforcement learning, and I believe 
you'll have a lot of other faculties who will take deeper into it. But what I wanted to tell you is there are multiple kind of use cases with these kind of technologies or methodologies are being um, uh, leveraged for meaningful, comprehensive or structured discovery. Um, unsupervised learning, especially the demonstrated reduction is being leveraged. Okay. Uh, for recommendation system, targeting marketing and customer segmentation, clustering is being used. Okay. So you can go and learn about it more. Uh, there are people around you who will be teaching you, taking you much more deeper into it. And But what I'm trying to tell you is, guys, you need to focus on AI technologies, on machine learning, on algorithms, and become good at it. Become good at data analytics too, right? Because uh, AI needs data. It needs analysis. It needs to create the test model uh, to be learned about it. Now, there is another set of technologies walking in, like federated AI. You need to become good uh, into it. Data privacy will become an acute. Uh, your data will be not accessed, but AI will learn from your data. Your mobile devices are already having AI algorithms. So you are having an Apple or Android devices that recognizes you. That's an AI. So it can also look at your data and understand uh, about you and generate the data set back to you where we call it an actionable intelligence. So that's a federated AI. It will learn from you, give it to central brain, and central brain knows exactly who you are, what you think, how do you behave, what kind of responses systems you will have. Okay, it knows everything about you. Okay, one sort of learning is another very powerful technology set. If you look at this particular thing, if AI looks at it, it can read any uh, digit from zero to nine. Any human being who writes it, it can recognize it just by looking at this. That's the one sort of learning. Most important, if you go down below on GPT-3, I've given earlier in reference to GPT-3 today, this transformation, uh, transformation technology uh, currently, or uh, general purpose technology, they call it, the GPT-3. It has been trained on 147 billion dollars uh, uh, parameters. It is so powerful, and we don't have an access to it on GPT-3. Now Microsoft has commercialized it, and you can actually go and buy that GPT-3 access. And it is so powerful that if you give it a word and say you write a book on it, it can write a book around it, right? So this is very really you need to go and understand GPT-3, probably access it, and leverage that, and start leveraging this technology. Look at from the other perspective, AlphaGo. You know what? The deep learning, um, um, they, they, uh, they developed a game, they, uh, AI, which can defeat a Go champion. Go is a game in Korea. Uh, it is a very, very complex game. It is much more complex than chess. Uh, every move you make, there are, there are 200 million options for that. Okay? And this game, they always said that AI cannot defeat uh, the humans here uh, because it is a very, very intuitive game. But by in 2017, AlphaGo defeated Lee Sedol, who was the reigning champion of Go uh, game. And uh, it, he was defeated. And actually, the world woke up to the fact that AI has become so powerful. Okay, it can defeat in Go. Now, what they did was they took AlphaGo and then Google bought this company. Okay, and, um, and, and they developed AlphaGero. AlphaGero is AlphaGo only. Okay, and it never played with any human beings. It's a kind of an alien technology. It learned from AlphaGo only, and only in 40 days, 40 days, it became so good that if I try to compare on AlphaGo, if you play with AlphaGo, a human who is a Go champion, if you play with AlphaGo, the winning probability for him is 4%. Okay, out of 100, char game ho jeet sakta hai. But now with Alpha Zero, the probability for humans winning from this is 0%. We cannot win from it. And why the heck they are investing such a humongous amount of money, around $25 million they invested in developing Alpha Zero, which in 40 days learned 3,000 years of human knowledge. Why they are developing it? Market gentlemen, when the balloon will be up, when there will be a war between these nations and us, AI will be assisting their commanders in playing the game with us, the war game with us, and we will never win. Okay? So we have to wake up to this fact. You guys have to wake up to this fact. And we have to go ahead and see that how do we quit? How do we invest? How do we do more research? How do we become experts and ensure that it makes a soft landing? Uh, AI, uh, this I'll not delve deeper, but I will tell you this causal entropy maximization. It's an MIT professor who pointed it out. He says, we became intelligent on this earth uh, due to uh, second law of thermodynamics, that is entropy. Okay? God has not made it his intelligence. And he proved it by developing a software known as 
uh, in Tropica, and you guys can go read more about it. Uh, what I'm trying to tell you is that when the Entropica kind of a software was given, the future histories or more complexities was thrown to it, it actually became intelligent in responding to it. The software became intelligent, okay? And the AI algorithm became intelligent to respond to it. And that means that what we are looking tomorrow is that when AI and when it becomes intelligent, the software becomes intelligent, there is a distinct possibility of bio-digital fusion. We are already there. We have got an extension to it. Our mobile device is there always in our hands now. We are wearing these variables. We are putting our data set. Tomorrow, we'll get more integrated with this kind of, with the guy walking in, will become more integrated, to become part of us. So biodigital fusion will be uh, a more distinct possibility. And you know, Elon Musk company known as Neuralink, they have recently developed a small chip which can be transplanted on your head. And you can hear music. You don't have to put your headphones anymore. You want to hear music, you have to just ask it and it will play music in a full atmos, in three dimension, in 5.1 Dolby sound you will be hearing inside your head. They have developed this kind of a chip. They are planning to download your memories on silicon and that is what they call it emulation. And these are some of the focus areas currently uh, the companies, uh, countries like US, China, they are working on. Corporations like Microsoft, IBM, they are working. They call it a whole brain emulation. And that is the way to develop AGI technologies. They plan to download and slice your brain into multiple parts, look at your neurons and, and synapses connectivity and model that onto, onto the cloud, right? So you will have your brain as human being available. You will be available on the cloud too. And as you go through your life and learn things, it will be also learning and process. But that will be leveraged to predict about you. What do you want to eat today? How, where do you want to go today? Uh, what kind of book you want to read? Okay, what kind of environment you like? Okay, all that will be learned because the, your emulation will be available on the cloud. They are talking about brain in a box. It is headed by an Indian, Medha, he hates that. This particular um, uh, uh, project, they call it brain in a box by 2020. This is an IBM. They are talking about it. Now, obviously we are in 2021, so they must have developed it already. It is based on neuromorphic computing chips, okay? They are talking at a CDI. So when we humans take birth, we have got 30% of neurons in our head. As we become adult in 21 years, we develop rest of the 70% of our human brain, right? They are talking about a similar thing. From CDI, they will be adding more chips. It will be learning it. The differential between us and the AI will be, the CDI will be, that we become adult in 21 years. It will become adult in 21 months probably, or 21 days. I don't know. I mean, I can conjecture, it will take a very short period of time to become an adult. Okay, the, the tomorrow, we'll be talking, we'll be not typing, we'll be not doing effective computing. The voice-based command or a gesture-based command will be not there. We'll be directly interacting with the computer systems or AI, which is known as brain-computer interface. It is already there. You hit the YouTube, type BCI, you'll be able to see that your, your, your signals or your neuron signals are being converted into thoughts and quadriplegics and paraplegics, people who are disabled, they're actually uh, communicating uh, with the AI and uh, uh, the software now, the computer now, to talk about them, right? We'll be doing the same thing. We'll be talking to computers by just thinking. That is the brain-computer interface. That um, everything will be gone. So this is very, very critical. This term, some of these technology progressions, we need to understand where the world is moving, right? Now let's look at why we should be afraid of AI. If you look at the left hand side of my screen, you'll see the intelligence staircase. I hope you are able to listen to me. Gaurav, you are still, you guys are still there, right? Yes, sir. I hope, yes, uh, sir. wonderful, wonderful. I hope you are, you are enjoying or um, getting bored. Let me, let, let me know. Okay, if getting bored. We are enjoying. Wonderful, wonderful, thank you. So if you look from the left hand side of my screen, you will see the intelligence staircase. We are on the top of that intelligence staircase. We operate between 90 to 140 IQ level. On, on this intelligence staircase, you go down two steps below, you'll find gorillas and chimpanzees are there, right? They operate between 30 to 40 IQ level, right? And uh, you can do this experiment. You go to uh, the nearest zoo where gorillas and chimpanzees are there. Uh, don't go to a gorilla, go to a chimpanzee. And try to explain algebra to him or try to explain trachnomatic theorem to him. 
बट एक थप्पड़ मारेगा जरूर राइट सो दैट विल हैपन वी ह्यूमंस व्हिच ऑपरेट बिटवीन 90 टू 140 आईक्यू लेवल वी आइंस्टीन वाज 140 आईक्यू लेवल राइट यू गाइस मस्ट बी 120 110 आईक्यू लेवल पीपल राइट सो द यू कैन नॉट एक्सप्लेन अल्जेब्रा एंड ट्रायगोनोमेटिक थ्योरम to gorilla or chimpanzee which operate between 30 to 40 iq level go down to steps down below there is chicken it operates between 15 to 20 iq level too right and uh, and what we do with them we eat them day in day out right chicken chili chicken tandoori chicken butter masala uh, chicken changhe ji i don't know what is man we eat them day and karodo maar ke kha jate hain roz hum right go down let me down below on the intelligence staircase the ants and bees are there we are learning from them the song computing that the that the area in ai we are learning from them how they collaborate together how they work together there lot of thing on drones and all the song computing is being leveraged today but then what we have done we have announced a chemical warfare against them a biological warfare a chemical warfare against them today we don't have machhars and makhis in our houses right we have just banished them right we have just deleted them from our life virtually so a human operating between 90 to 140 iq level can have catastrophic impact on other intelligent beings on this earth like chicken and ants right and gorillas also we have we are we are just finishing them off all right so if you go on the right hand side you will see this is the biological range of intelligence on this earth uh, humans on the top ants on the or the insects on the bottom right but when agi and asi will come in agi will operate at around 5000 iq level an artificial super intelligence will operate at 12500 iq level that's the fear gentlemen the perverse instantiation is the fearful factor okay what will happen let's try to tell you make you understand what the perverse instantiation is all about they are so intelligent operating at 12500 iq level that when it will be there you go and ask uh, asi ki bhai sahab hame bhook lagti hai aap bhook khatam kar dijiye is prithvi se now artificial super intelligence being so intelligent all collective human intelligence put together it's a single ten operating at 12500 it will do innovations theorems uh, thought processes which we humans will not even understand right it may even think that he bhook kisko lagti hai humans ko to humans ko agar khatam kar deta hu to bhook khatam ho jayegi and it is so easy to kill us you have seen that in covid 19 we are bound in our houses for last two years right so you can well imagine that any one virus can just obliterate us and asi can generate that artificial super intelligence so easy to kill now this is known as perverse instantiation that's the fear that's the fear factor okay with such kind of intelligence uh, coming on it where is technology today today we are equal to a mosquito brain a deep learning platform has got 2.5 million neurons simulated okay it is equal to a machhar ke dimag ke barabar hai very soon it will cross the red rat brain then the human brain that is the general intelligence and then it will reach to artificial super intelligence now from agi to asi it can be a day it can be few seconds it can be few minutes because agi will have an access to humongous computational capability hamari limitation hai ye khopdi but uski limitation nahi hogi because it will have access to a computational capability on the cloud big quantum and big other uh, uh, servers and all and it can jump from agi to asi it will beyond our control okay so that is something which we need to understand and realize and that's the fear factor with ai is so you few relate to my second slide when i was talking about why elon musk is saying we are summoning the demon hum rakshas bula rahe hain so ai take off is imminent gentlemen the intelligence explosion is intelligent is imminent and, and we need to realize it we have got two options we have got an option that will become immortals or we will go extinct i believe and what i understand that if we focus our energy is right we can become immortals let's try to understand uh, what this all immortality is all about right you know uh, on on aging from azadi se ab tak okay in last 70 years uh, we our life expectancy from 40 years has jumped up to up to 70 years now right हम सत्तर साल तक जिंदा रहते हैं आजकल सेवेंटी ईयर्स नाउ दे आर टॉकिंग अबाउट टेक्नोलॉजीज लाइक ऑन विच इज बेस्ड ऑन नोवर डी एन ए एंड होल होल साइंस होल स्ट्रीम और इंडस्ट्री इज वर्किंग टूवर्ड्स इट सो सो दैट वी कैन पुस द बाउंड्री फ्रॉम सेवेंटी फर्दर राइट वी वॉन्ट टू लीव फॉर एवर 
that is the whole idea can we become uh, immortals can hum kya and it is very nice to also try to understand this uh, that hindu mythology talks about three levels they talk about manav us the homo sapiens it talks about um, devtas okay and then brahma or bhagwan right so devtas and between us they are close similarity they have got all the human fallibility which we are having you know the stories of uh, narad muni and uh, indra bhagwan and hanuman bhagwan hanuman bhagwan the sadhvi nahi kiye the so all all that is story line we know about them right so what is the difference between them and us the first difference is that they have got super powers right hanuman ji ke paas gada tha indra ji ke paas mein vajra tha uh, ram bhagwan ram ji ke paas mein uh, brahmastra tha we have got all that हमारे पास एटम बम्स हैं फ्यूजन बम्स हैं आईसीबीएम्स हैं ब्रह्मास्त्र है आईसी कॉन्टिनें इंटर कॉन्टिनेंटल बैलिस्टिक मिसाइल आई बी एम्स आकाश सब है हमारे पास एंड स्टार वॉल्स है लेजर बीम्स है दैट इज ऑल्सो देयर सैटेलाइट है हमारे पास सो वी हैव वी हैव इक्वेटेड विद गॉड्स देयर राइट देवताओं के साथ बट एक चीज नहीं है हमारे पास और वो है अमृत अमर नहीं है हम वी डाइट राइट एंड नाउ साइंस इज पुशिंग दैट बाउंड्री लिवरेजिंग ए आई दैट कैन बी बिकम Um, uh, Amar or immortals in communicating. Now Google established a company known as Calico, and they are working actually towards that direction. There is a technology in genetic engineering known as CRISPR. They they can leverage CRISPR to take your DNA out. Your DNA has got 700 million genomes into it. They exactly know which genome has to be curtailed, taken out, and so that a new DNA can be inserted into your body, which will take away some of the diseases like Wolf syndrome. they are focusing their energies on diabetes on cancer and other diseases okay but they don't know exactly out of these 700 million genomes in your dna what else can be impacted so that we will stop aging and that is where asi or agi will be leveraged to understand and predict and those genomes will be impacted in your dna and everybody's dna is different your dna is different than mine so it has to be very very customized right but then they can gen, uh, generate a general purpose technology uh, which will be an amrit for us right will not age anymore will not die anymore so death will be not an option anymore okay so ai is being leveraged to take us there the world will become more collateral right you will be everything will be three dimensional today we have worked with the two dimensional technologies like our mobile device uh, our laptops and computers it's a two dimensional but very soon with mixed reality ar vr you will be working into a three dimensional world all together you will learn you will not learn anymore you will experience things understand that uh, you learn about this periodic table right hum ratta marte hain hum usko seekhte hain rab usko yaad rakhte hain a periodic table but if you see that in three dimension that how uh, two atoms of hydrogen comes and mixes with oxygen and it becomes water then you will not forget it you know what this combination is all about you will not forget about because this will become an experience and humans learn much more better if they experience things so the world is becoming three dimensional with ar vr and mixed reality augmented reality virtual reality and mixed reality ai is assisting it to make more interactive in nature it will generate on the fly uh, the ar vr environment for you right the world can be brought back from being red to green by ai okay leveraging ai those kind of technologies uh, for carbon control or uh, is being leveraged for leveraging ai and that is something which we need to uh, understand and focus on <sighs> ai ethics we talked about uh, the uh, the perversion right the instantaneous perversion uh, with the ai technologies that generates another area which is the ai the ai ethics area it's a very very critical now uh even united nations is now seized specifically on the lethal autonomous weapons they have got a committee uh, the country the working together because ai has got a good ai and a bad ai okay we have to be very very careful that we develop good ai that is very critical if we develop bad ai which the the militaries are developing okay the lethal autonomous weapons which are being developed then it will be a doom and end of humans because it will bring the threshold of war down okay if you lose few billion dollars and get a country like india you will spend few billion dollars leveraging ai technology uh, to to wage a war in any country right let, let me let me try to make you understand when i say threshold of war will bring it out and ai a bad ai will do that and that's the part of the ethics one uh, but there are a lot of other part of the ethics uh, like uh, human led explainable transformant uh, transparent trainable and reversible 
these are some ethical values of AI. Which, but then the rogue nations like China, they can develop, they can attack us, leveraging AI, autonomous tanks, drones, um, exoskeletons. They can wage war. We will die, but they they will not lose any human life uh, tomorrow. Okay, they can take us and win us uh, over with only a few billions of dollars. Like, let me give you and try to give an example on that. If it was possible to make an atom bomb, leveraging a few a few bits of sand and your micro microwave, if you can make an atom bomb, we would have not been existing today. Ghar ghar mein atom bomb put chuka hota right? You know the the kind of uh, people who are terrorists. Um, um, and these people who are um, uh, what they do, right? They kill people around. If they get an access to nuclear technology, a threshold have been so low, they would have been exploding uh, uh, bombs. In Delhi itself, there would have been 100 nuclear bombs gone uh, till date, right? We would have been obliterated. Human race would have been obliterated till today. So good AI and bad AI is very, very critical. Uh, this is something which we can only, as a democracy, we can, we have to talk about it. We need to interject there. We need to guide world also. And I believe India is rightly positioned to work into this direction and become a Vishwa Guru. We need to contribute here. Okay. And that is very, very critical for us. And let me tell you, Sanskrit is considered to be the most unambiguous language or specifically to talk to AI. Okay. Uh, do your research. Um, um, uh, when I say an ambiguous language, other languages like Hindi, English are, are very, very ambiguous language, and we are not working. Okay, NASA is working, but we Indians, we are so unfortunate that we are not working. All of our academia is not working into that direction. That how can be these kind of controls or, or or translators can be developed, which can talk to AI languages in Sanskrit, being a very, very uh, unambiguous and a structured language. You know the Panini grammar, it has got more than 4,000 rules, no language is having it. Upanishads are being touted, uh, can develop a good um, a mathematical model to give us a good AI. By the way, our Indian universities, and we are not, our academia is not working. These kind of research is happening in Austria and developed nations. So we have to understand and bring our focus back into quickly and see that these technologies we also work upon and bring it inside to us. AI is going to assist us. So we homo sapiens currently is plagued by war, famine and disease, COVID-19, right? Bhook, hakal, usse, baad, isse hum marte rehte hain, ladaiyan ladte rehte hain. This is what homo sapiens is all about. But AI will assist us to go towards immortality, happiness and divinity. Okay? Wo hame manual work se mukti de dega. We will be doing what we are supposed to do. More research, achieve and become more, become more happy. Become immortals, right? We achieve a divinity. This is what we... So from Homo sapiens, AI can help us go towards become a Homo Deus. And by the way, there is a book also from Harari. You can read that book, Homo Deus, uh, Sapiens and uh, Deus. I recommend that. But one critical aspect which you need to understand quickly also is this: all these things which I'm talking about. Why US is investing more than $3 trillion towards super intelligence? Because that gives them a decisive strategic advantage. That's the third offset they are trying to achieve. Okay, what's the decisive strategic advantage? Nuclear bomb was the first decisive strategic advantage. Let me tell you this way. So when they put Naga, uh, Nagasaki, Hiroshima, uh, the fat boy and little brother, uh, five uh, million people just vanished from Earth in few seconds. Right? You know that. Thus, lakh lo, five second me jal ke basma ho and country like Japan kneeled down. They surrendered. So when they realized this is a decisive strategic advantage, what they did, they put up a non-proliferation treaty in place, a supplier's agreement in place. And we, country, India, took 32 years to develop our own nuclear bomb. So we do, did our poker in 1974, right? So then they developed technologies like ICBMs, RBMs, Star Wars, satellites, when they developed that, they understood this is a decisive strategic advantage. They can put up a bomb in any country from their country. They don't have to go there. They have to just bombard that nation with these missile systems, ICBMs and uh, ICBMs and IRBMs. So what they did, they put up a ban on cryogenic engine. Okay, it took us 25 years to develop our own rocket. Now they are developing singleton. They are developing artificial super intelligence. Okay, that we call that singleton. The ten off. So they're developing 10 hours now. And if we are not party to it, 
it will be end of us. It will be we are looking at a puppy. So this is a decisive strategic advantage. If they develop it, we'll be happy what we are doing. We'll have food on table. We'll have travel with, uh, with us. We'll be happy. Only one thing will be not left with us is to make decisions. Okay. This is something we, we need to understand it. And then we will be obliterated. The controls will shift to only one person. So that is very, very important. India may not exist as a nation anymore. So there will be no catching up, gentlemen, if we don't become party to that. India is not an industrial revolution 4.0 map today. Whatever we talk about, whatever our politicians talk about, we are not. Look at the top 100 uh, companies, uh, specifically in AI, EFT space. All of them are in Northern America. China is catching up very fast. China has got a productive environment. So they have got Amazon. Uh, Google, China has got Badu, but we, we put our data on Google, right? So they have got uh, Amazon, China has got Alibaba. So they have protected, they don't allow Google or Amazon to operate in their country, but they are all access to us. We are a democratic setup. Our data is with them. Our data is not with us. We don't have startups. So they develop uh, Amazon, we'll have Flipkart, okay, or Lenskart. We don't develop our fundamental IPs. We don't develop our own innovative companies. That is a critical need of today. That is the requirement of universities. So if you don't have an AI strategy now, even the university, these universities are going to close down. Okay. 800 engineering colleges has closed down in the last few years. Let me tell you. And AI, advent of AI, as it is walking in, if we don't map it to app, we don't generate our IP, we don't invest more in research, and, 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 and develop these capabilities, we'll be on a closer path. We'll be on a servitude path. So that is very, very critical for us to understand. If you look from the investment perspective, maximum investment, around 32% IT industry is doing in AI. All are in the industries. From government to management consulting to electric electronics, they have got few bits of money which is going into that. That is something which we have to go on increasing and see that industries meet hands and academia meet times and we work together into this technology aspect and invest more, become more acute focus. Today, AI, if you look from the perspective, the max on and there are in the world we are living in, the narrow intelligence world, we are working in few few use cases, right? Real-time optimization, the strategic optimization, radical personalization, forecasting, process and structured data. And these all industries are impacted today. Be it automotive, media, or, or, or telecom. All are impacted in different ways, in different areas. Now, from predictive maintenance, uh, probably agriculture is more impacted, right? More implementations are happening. But on, on social or, or media, if you look at strategic optimization, is more and more important for media industry, right? One thing which we need to understand quickly is, <coughs> in the, all these industries, if there, it has any use case, has got data, and um, and there is an ROI, return on investment, in leveraging AI, AI is being leveraged. Algorithms are being put. So if impact or the return on investment in leveraging AI is 1.3, like on one of the use case on telecom industry, on top, predict lifetime value and risk churn for individual customers. But data is available, it is there, and the impact is used, AI is being implemented. The predictive analytics is being implemented. So that is true for industry. Where, wherever there is a return on investment, and data availability is there. The AI is being implemented today, gentlemen. And, and even if the data is not able, the companies are moving into digital transformation. They are creating data um, uh, capturing techniques or data enablement are being happening today. And that will generate the control layer of AI uh, walking in tomorrow. Now, more into that. Okay. So we are moving towards a hyper competitive digital enterprise. We are moving from an imperative to declarative. We will not wait things to happen and then take a right a standard operating procedure to handle it tomorrow. No, we'll predict things. These industries, academia, they are predicting things, leveraging AI. They are hyper competitive enterprises now. They are predicting things and now they are developing those things which can take care of those issues or, or um, as, it, uh, 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 as it will happen, right? So from hindsight, we are moving towards foresight. From general purpose, we are moving to a build for purpose. Everything is training today, right? Programming is going away. There is no need for programming. We talk about data cleansing, clustering, and training, more of it. From Moore's law, we are moving towards new physics. I talked about quantum and all. 
So data burden, which is from proprietary technology, it will be programming. From central authority, everything will be distributed and just. It will also create a very just and fair world also, gentlemen. From data burden, it is going to create an opportunity. Data will become an opportunity. We have to understand that, generate data, and, and, and ensure that we live with that data. If you don't have an AI strategy, you're going to die in the world that is coming. That is David Bing, CEO of eBay, right? You are industry, you are an academia, you are a government. If you don't have an AI strategy, you're going to die tomorrow. So let's be aware of that and see that we are party to this world which is coming in. What kind of jobs will be left out to us? Jobs which will require creativity and compassion. Those jobs will be left out to us. All other jobs. Which, which can be optimized and compassion is not needed will be gone. So if you look from that, jobs which needs creativity will be, humans will be still there leveraging it. Down below, which can be optimized and compassion not needed, truck drivers, Uber drivers, security guards, salesmen, these jobs will be gone from us. AI will take over all those jobs. It is already taking it away. Where compassion is needed, like elderly companion support, humans will be still there but they'll be leveraging AI much more larger. But where there is a lot of creativity and strategy needed and compassion needed, job like CEO's job, a doctor's job, those jobs will be still with humans in coming decade, okay? But they'll be leveraging AI. So AI is going to be pervasive. It is going to be everywhere. That is something which we need to understand. So the jobs below 60K, today the bar is, all jobs which is below 60K dollars, I mean $60,000, they are going to go away. They are already in red due to AI. Okay, waiters, cashier, retail sales, personal care aides, store clerks, customer service repairs, they are red. Okay, but this bar will go up as we move from artificial narrow intelligence to artificial general intelligence. The other jobs like accountants, sales reps and all will come down, become red. And it becomes our AGI and ASI. We are doomed. All these jobs will be not required if we are looking for jobs. But then we are talking a different economy altogether. So what we need to do, we need to become critical thinkers. We need to understand how to push the envelope. We need to be, start living a natural, curious life. We should not become easily overwhelmed. You need to train yourself for that. And we need to start loving math and statistics and science. That is very, very critical to survive in the coming decade, specifically into the job market. If you look from this, you know this guy, right, Putin? He said recently, artificial intelligence is the future, not only for Russia, but for all humankind. It comes with colossal opportunities, but also threats that are difficult to predict. Whoever becomes a leader in this sphere will become the ruler of the world. They are, gentlemen, very, very clear. They want to become the ruler of the world. That's the mindset they are having. If we don't take a leadership position, we they will be ruling us again. Okay? U.S. is putting more than a three trillion dollars into AI. China is putting 147 billion dollars into AI. 2.5 trillion dollars into associated technology areas like uh, robotics, blockchain, IoT, and all these are associated, associated technology areas. China has already taken a lead. They are publishing more papers on AI than the United States of America. India, you can see, we are seven or eight down below somewhere. Okay. More investment is happening in AI in Northern America and China today, but China is catching up. So companies like Google, Amazon, IBM, Facebook, Apple, they have made hands. They have adopted a strategy. They call it AI first strategy. Hum jo bhi karenge, AI se karenge. AI aage rakke karenge. This is what the strategy they have adopted. This is the website you can go and help them partnership on AI. Okay, they are collaborating together. They are sharing IPs on AI together and working towards it. This is the time we should start sharing. We should start collaborating. We, academia and industry in India, we have to collaborate. We have to walk into this direction. This is very, very critical for our leaders to understand. Okay, from academia, from industry to collaborate and join hands. It is very, very critical for us. Let's let's see that it happens. I believe. I ensure. Um, I, I, I dream about this needs to happen fast in India. Otherwise, we'll be, we'll be doomed. So we are, I believe, we are on the cusp of century's biggest opportunity. Uh, AI uh, being a general purpose technology, the biggest opportunity we have. We have got, got the right kind of GDP, right kind of population. You guys are there. And uh, we can join hands and see that we work into that. And we become a Vishu Guru. Uh, we have got uh, everything. You can see that. Uh, we are on the cusp of it. 
Uh, only thing we require is the focus and collaboration. Uh, what we do at Viti, uh, we are partners to multiple um, uh, organizations and industries and academia. We are partners to more than 15 universities, uh, three of the IITs and um, uh, triple IITs as well. We are partners to organizations like IBM, Microsoft, Grant Thornton, KPMG, uh, etc. Uh, we are we are partners to industry associations like MISIA, PMA, Pune Management Association, TBIF, IIT Roper, and all. Uh, we are also to other uh, technology firms. We are partners to them. Uh, we are establishing AI innovation hubs and our own exchanges so that we can move projects from industry uh, to these hubs and where uh, the faculties and the students can make their hands dirty and catch up on these technologies much more faster. That's the goal which we have. Uh, so we can help the students and faculties move into that direction, gain practical experience and develop new ecosystems and IPs. Uh, quickly, uh, that's the idea. Uh, we we are pushing this kind of uh, uh, AI innovation hubs and delivery organizations. Uh, we are intervening uh, into academia uh, from uh, project based, from training, uh, from domain focused AI. Uh, other projects, we are we are getting those projects. We are doing a lot of projects at this point of time. Uh, research projects we are bringing in, and we are pushing in into academia. Uh, we are all domains from healthcare to finance to technology, aviation, agriculture. Uh, we are working on. We are being a foundation also. Uh, we are doing a lot of CSR based projects. We recently got funded by ONGC uh, for a project we call it Doody. Uh, this project down below. Uh, this we are developing a robotic implementation, uh, which is an AI based uh, um, a navigation system in water bodies, which will clean our water bodies, uh, take out salt, solid waste like plastic, juta, chappal. Uh, etc., which uh, which is killing our water body. Drinking water is going to be a big problem in coming decade, and uh, they, and this this particular project uh, will uh, bring in these kind of devices. Duri ka matlab kachwa hota hai, Sanskrit mein. So we are developing this small tortoise to clean our water body. But then it brings in a lot of AI capabilities like auto, auto, autonomous uh, navigation in water bodies, identification, computer vision, identification of waste. Uh, uh, inorganic waste from organic waste, okay, and um, and these devices are what we are designing is the 3D printable devices, and they will be remaining and underwater uh, in water for next 20, 30 years. Clean about five kgs of waste every week. Uh, so we plan to have 7.2 uh, tons of uh, waste in a lifetime. Uh, these devices will be taking out the small devices. So it has got a huge implementation. We have got funded by ONGC on this. I believe we can work on a lot of others like Sarthi we are investing in. That's an edutech platform. And uh, we are looking at universities and academia to participate, uh, to work with us in developing this an AI-based platform, which will help students learn or learners learn better, uh, generate a lot of data analytics, um, and, and, and also um, uh, connect us from learn, earn, and play. All these three aspects this platform will do, uh, help us in getting jobs, right jobs which is more with our profile our interest area and also help us in playing i mean connecting dots connecting people so that will do uh, we are their gentlemen uh, groups like ai for humanity women of ai i am there available on uh, facebook twitter linkedin you can join hands with me uh, kundana lal uh, you can always approach me or my uh, we have got a channel with ai you can we have got ai community hurdle industry leaders round table group of vice chancellors. Uh, we are doing a lot of events also. Uh, thank you. This is my number, my email ID. Um, any point of time you want to approach me, uh, think through, I'll be more than happy to assist you. Thank you. Thank you, gentlemen, uh, for listening to me so patiently. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir, for you. your <laughs> Such a good insight you have given here, actually. Now, the future of the man itself is in danger. <laughs> so I would uh, request the participants if they want to ask any questions, they may ask, please. It seems. Uh... That's okay. I mean, no questions, it seems. Uh, I think that's okay, sir. Yeah, yeah. So we, uh, we shall be in touch. Good morning. Good morning. 
Yeah, good morning, Vidya ji. Hello. Yeah, sir. Uh, the session was very good, and and uh, to be frank, uh, I feel that it's very scary at the same time. Just thinking of the future of human being. Uh, now you said uh, in the, the time talk taken that for uh, producing the robots is or the cars is very less now. But are there any customers the same pace who are using? Uh, I couldn't get it. Customers for what? Yeah, customers using, say for example, the car example which you took, sir, 36 days to produce one car is now 3.6 days to produce. But at the same time, are there the customers rate increasing who are buying these products? The ratio, the which the producer... Absolutely, and the absolutely, absolutely. You are, right, as a consumer, you are buying all these things which is coming, which is being developed by AI now. So every manufacturing capability today or automation which is there, the robotic implementation, they are they are being guided by AI from design to production, right? So you are already leveraging those um, AI-based products. You are buying it in your home, be it furniture, be it cars. Be, um, AI is intervening in every sphere of our life now. Okay, sir. thank you, sir. Good morning, sir. Sir, uh, yeah, are there any Indian organizations that are working with uh, Sanskrit and AI? Or what is the path uh, you would suggest to start with this? I, I'll suggest, Priyankaji, you guys should actually start focusing upon that. I believe you are a PhD scholar, right? Yes. So this is something you need to... Uh, absolutely, absolutely. I, uh, you, you, you guys should focus upon, you should pick up these kind of topics and see that you research, you bring your expertise on the table for this. It is not something that IPs are being developed, uh, not in India, but outside India. So we need to start focusing upon it. And I would love to assist you in doing it. I'm, I'm approaching a lot of universities, uh, some of the universities which do have an access to and may have an interest into working in this direction. And I would love to assist you into that. Okay, thank you so much, sir. Shall definitely connect with you regarding this. Thank you. Anything else? Good morning, sir. Yeah, morning. Sir, uh, I mean, uh, coming from a, a background from the industry, you know, so uh, we do see that there are a few companies which are very aggressive in That's terms okay. of adopting AI. Okay. And at the same time, there are companies which are still kind of struggling to find their way through the basic structured data, right? So where exactly do we get to work on projects, you know? So we know about Kaggle and all their places where they host competitions, but, you know, the, the names are quite limited, you know? So where all can we go to find out more meaningful data which can be analyzed and get proper guidance how to proceed with that? So, Animesh, there are two ways to handle this, okay? And that is what we are doing, okay? Um, see, uh, Indian companies are generally type C companies, okay? When the whole world has moved, then we move, okay? So that is how it happens. But obviously the companies uh, in developed nations, they, they are type A companies. Even if the technology adoption for them is pretty fast, they look for these technologies, see that how their productivity goes up, their top line and bottom line can be impacted, uh, their gross margins are impacted, productivity is impacted. They adopt technologies much more faster. So for India, uh, probably we need, we have got two steps. One is the step which we call it the education. Uh, you need to educate them. We need to make them aware. And then obviously start working with them with use cases. And we are doing it. We are doing it. Let me give you one example. Uh, we are working one project uh, with Triple IT Bhagalpur with Power Grid, uh, where they had a theft issue. So they have got lattice towers and, and there is a theft issue there. And they approached us that can ai can ai be uh, we have been in touch with them and they approached us that can ai be leveraged uh, to stop tempting to these lattice so we are developing a computer reason based uh, implementation which can be handled with the solar based a uh, power based camera system and a computer system which can identify that threat and give an early warning system on the cloud itself we are developing that cloud platform for them too 
okay so so what i am what i am trying to tell that to kitan ke liye needs can be created no? we have to connect those parts we have to educate them we have to work with them very closely to see that this is where you find this step in from academia you can work with us on these kind of okay. sure sir thank you isme se lag jayega upar wali bhi to chahiye na seedha लेक्चर वॉज वंडरफुल एंड इट गेव वेल्यूएबल इन साइट टू अस and in future also we shall be in touch sir thank, thank you. you so much sir thank you sir thank you for your motivational lecture <laughs> thank you very much participants from 10 am we shall be joining the inauguration ceremony so the link will be active in meanwhile